In this video, we will look at a few examples to practice working with the empirical rule for normal distributions. Example A, the lifetimes of a certain type of light bulb are normally distributed. The mean life is 400 hours and the standard deviation is 75 hours. So that's important. The mean is 400 and the standard deviation is 75. For a group of 5,000 light bulbs, how many are expected to last each of the following times? Okay, so before answering the questions, I would recommend making a graph for yourself that shows the data. So, or what we know. So we know the mean is 400 hours. And so that is where we'll have the highest probability of being. We also know our standard deviation. So I'm just going to sketch out three standard deviations away. It's obviously not exact, but this is just to help us visualize it. We know the standard deviation is 75. So up here, I'm going to do 400 plus 75, and I get 475. And I can keep adding by 75s to get the next standard deviations away. So the next one would be 550 and then 625. Below the mean, I would subtract 75 to find each of these values, and I'd get 325, 250, and 175. Okay, so the first question is, how many are expected to last between 325 and 475? So 325 to 475. So that would be, all the bulbs that are within one standard deviation of the mean. And from the empirical rule, we know that 68% of the data is within one standard deviation. So that means 68% of our 5,000 light bulbs will last between 325 and 475, or that's what we would expect. So to figure this out, I'm going to do 0.68 68% times 5,000, and I got my answer is 3,400. So I would expect about 3,400 light bulbs will last between 325 and 475 hours. Next question. How many would I expect to last more than 250 hours? Okay, so I can see that 250 is two standard deviations below the mean. Keep in mind that this whole distribution, the area under all of this adds up to 100%. So if we're trying to find more than 250 hours, that's all of this. I could also I could figure that out by taking 100% and subtracting that from this area right here. So to figure that out, I know that 95% is within two standard deviations. So that's 95%. And 99.7% is within three standard deviations. So that's this full amount right here. So that means 0.3% is not included here or here. So if I divide that by two, I know that each of these parts is 0.15%. I also know that the difference between the 95% and the 99.7%, which is this area here and this area here, is 4.7%. So each of those areas must be half of that, 2.35%. So that means that less than 250 hours is the sum of 0.15% and 2.35%, which is 2.5%. So the probability, or what we'd expect to be less than 250 hours, which is part C, is 2.5% of the 5,000, 
and more than 250 hours would be 97.5% because these two have to add up to 100%. Once we know that, we just have to multiply each of these by the 5,000 to get the expected number of light bulbs. And we end up with 4,875 for part B and 125 for part C. And again, you get that by just multiplying the percentage times 5,000 in each case. Example B, a bag of chips has a mean mass of 70 grams with a standard deviation of three grams. Assuming a normal distribution, create a normal curve, including all necessary values. So we'll make our normal curve and I always like to draw in where the mean is, and I know my mean is 70 grams. And my standard deviation is 3, so I will fill in my curve and just make it look as good as you can. And make little tick marks to show where your standard deviations are. And again, it doesn't have to be perfect, it's just a visual for you. So we're going to go up by 3, 76, 73, 76, 79, and then down by 3. And again, we're dealing with 3s because that was the standard deviation. Now, if 1,250 bags of chips are processed each day, how many bags will have a mass between 67 and 73 grams? So if we look on our graph, and this is why you want to make the graph, it makes this a lot easier. We can see, oh, okay, that's within one standard deviation of the mean. So I know that's going to be 68% of all of my numbers. So I'm just going to do 68% times 1,250, and I'll get my answer of 850. What about part B? What percentage of the bags of chips will have a mass greater than 64 grams. Okay, so 64 grams is right here, and we're looking for what percentage is all of this, from here all the way to the end. So one thing that we know is within two standard deviations, so from here to here, that part is 95%. So what that means is, Less than that over here is 5% because, sorry, that's not right. But we do know from the previous example, we were looking here at less than two standard deviations away was 2.5%. So this right here, is 2.5% everything below the two standard deviations and similarly above the two standard deviations is also 2.5% that adds up to 100% when you see 2.5, 95 and 2.5. Now the question was what percentage of the bags is a mass greater than 64? So again that's everything above the 64 so it's everything except this lowest 2.5%. So we can figure that out by just doing 100% minus 2.5% and we get 97.5% is our answer.